Hi there. I wanted to make a video to help you see what your child will be working on this week in math. So we're still continuing our fractions unit. We're going to be on fractions for a while. Students know how to add and subtract like denominators, which means the number on the bottom is the same. They know how to simplify fractions and they know how to find equivalent fractions. So now we're going to move on to adding and subtracting unlike denominators. So this first problem here, you can see two thirds plus one sixth. Three and six are not the same. You cannot add or subtract fractions if the denominators are different. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to teach this to students in class so that you can kind of understand it yourself and help with any tasks that might come home. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the denominator, which is our bottom number. So I have a three and a six. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the smallest denominator, which is my three, and I'm going to say, hmm, does anything times three equal six? Yes, three times two equals six. So that means that one six can stay the same because now I know I can change this bottom number to a six and that will match this one. So I'm going to rewrite two thirds equals and I'm going to put my six down here. Again, I know I multiplied by two to go from the first denominator to my new denominator. Whatever I do to the bottom, I must do to the top to keep it equal. Your child should know that. So I'm going to multiply by 2 because I multiplied by 2 on the bottom. So 2 times 2 is now 4. Now I have a 6 at the bottom and a 6 here. So my new equation becomes 1 6 plus 4 6. Okay. When we're adding fractions with like denominators now, we add the numerators together. 4 plus 1 gives you 5, and the denominators stay the same. So you just bring that 6 straight over, and your answer is 5, 6. Now, sometimes your child might get a problem where they have to simplify more. This problem I don't. 5 is a prime number. It can't be simplified any further. So just be on guard of that, though. If, if for example, if we had you know, four sixths, if that was our answer here, if this was a three instead of a four, we'd obviously have to simplify that down um, into two thirds by dividing by two. So just keep that in mind for the future, okay? But we did get five six here, okay? So this is what to do when you start. We looked at the lowest denominator. We tried to see if anything times that could fit into the larger one, okay? So that's one way. Now, there are sometimes where that won't happen, where you can't fit this one into this one, and you not only have to change one fraction, you have to change both the fraction. So down here, I have four fifths minus one half. Now, again, unlike denominators, two and five are different numbers, but I'm still going to do the same process. Two is the smallest. Does anything times two equal five? No, because two times two is four and two times three is six. I can't land on five. So that means that both of these numbers have to change. So there's kind of two things you can do here. You can find a common um, factor that they share, or common product that they share, I'm sorry, or you can multiply them together. So I have five and two, so I can just go ahead and multiply those both together. It's a, that gives them a shared feature. So I'm going to rewrite four fifths, and I'm going to rewrite one half, because I'm going to be changing both fractions, because nothing times two equals five. But if I multiply these two together, I know they have a common factor, or a common product of 10. I keep saying factor when I mean to say product. <laughs> okay, so I know they both equal, can both multiply something to get 10, so that's what my new denominator becomes. Now here's a little bit of the tricky part, just with multiple steps in the problems. How did I get from 5 to 10? Well, I multiplied by 2. So if I multiply by 2 on the bottom, I must multiply by 2 on the top to keep things equal. So 4 times 2 is 8. Okay, now for this one, how did I get from 2 to 10? Well, I multiplied by 5. So I have to multiply by 5 on the top. Some students, when they start this in the beginning, they start to get confused. Sometimes they will multiply by the same number up here and the same number down here, but they really have to look at the old denominator and the new denominator and ask themselves, what did they do to get there? And to make sure that they are changing those numbers correctly. So 2 times 5 gave me 10. 1 times 5 gives me 5. Now I have converted both of these unlike denominators into like terms. So now my new problem becomes 8 tenths minus, because I have to go back here, the said minus, make sure your child, some students will add accidentally because um, they're just not going back and looking. So definitely make sure you go back and make sure that their sign is correct on homework and tasks like that. Okay, again, when I subtract fractions with like terms, I just subtract my numerator. So 8 minus 5 gives me 3, and the denominator stays the same. 
Now, again, I don't need to simplify any further. Three is a prime number. It can only be divided by itself. Um, and I would just get the same answer. 10 is an even number, but three, like I said, doesn't have anything else it can be divided by. So three tenths would be my final answer. This is a very, very quick walkthrough. I will go through this much slower with your child um, in class and through our lessons, but this is just kind of a quick breakdown for you of what does this look like and how does it work? Hopefully this was helpful. Leave any comments or questions below if you have further um, concerns.